Community Hotline is made possible with generous support by the Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission. The Mount Hood Cable Regulatory Commission advocates on behalf of the public interest on communications policy issues at the local, state, and federal levels. Hi, and welcome to Community Hotline. I'm Monica Weitzel, and we're in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're going to start out tonight talking with the nonprofit Oral Hull Foundation for the Blind. And with us representing Oral Hull, we have Stephen Butler. You are the director. Thanks for being here. It's good to have you here again. Actually, I need, I'm not the director of the park. I'm, oh, director I, of the board. I'm on the board, board of, directors, of directors, yes. Okay, thank you for that clarification. And Steve Gerritsen, you are the park host. I New sure. park host, is that right? right. Very yes, much. welcome. Nice to have you here. Thank you. So, excuse me, Stephen, as a director of the Oral Hull Board of Directors, is that right? Is this I just didn't want to get in trouble with my boss. <laughs> but, <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, tell me a little bit, if you would, about uh, Oral Hull Foundation, what, why you exist and what your mission is. We actually have existed for several years. Uh, we had a, a very gracious donor, which had property in the Sandy area mm -hmm. that she wanted to deed it to a worthy nonprofit. Okay. She met with her attorney and uh, the name Oral Hull actually comes from our benefactor. It was Oral Hull was the woman that made the donation. Oh, okay. And so thus came into existence the park for the servicing of the blind, which is really important because most people think, for example, that the Oregon State Commission for the Blind takes care of the needs of the blind. Mm -hmm. And they do, if what you're looking for is to go back to work. Right, they but give it, uh, assistance getting you back to work and, and working with the employers. That's it, Okay. and that's great, mm -hmm. but they don't help you with how do I wash my dishes without stabbing myself with a knife? How do I turn on my stove without setting my shirt on fire? And I've set my kitchen on fire four times, so trust me, I know that, I know that it happens. <laughs> he knows what he's talking about. And, but that's what we do. We have living with, with vision loss seminars. We have uh, camps. We have, believe it or not, we have blind people coming out that skydive. And that, that, um, I've heard this. Kayaking. I'm wanting to skydive, so that, that impresses me. Maybe it's easier if you can't see. What even you're going. Bike, I don't know. We even do bike riding. You know, I want to hear more about that. But tell me something. Do you mostly work with people who have lost their vision, like later in life they weren't born without it, or they weren't born blind? What? I think it's a pretty, pretty fair sampling of both, because oh, there are okay. some that are totally blind, mm -hmm. and they're there to continue to improve their life skills, and then there are those that might go under the knife for surgery on a non-related item and wake up totally blind. It happens. Wow. And we all know, I know that you know, we all know somebody who as they progress in age, mm -hmm. they have macular degeneration or maybe diabetic retinopathy. Mm -hmm. They start to lose their vision and it's a very scary thing. So we try to embrace these people and show them, you can still do, I, I mean, being blind doesn't stop us from being productive. You have been, <laughs> A cameraman on this show before. I have because yes. of your type of um, your sightedness is very, uh, very, very, very limited. Yes, so uh, so you're able to do that as long as it's not like a moving production, right? Exactly. Right. If you don't move the furniture, we're okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I mean, that's a great. That's great. But I love telling people that. That yeah, my cameraman was. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's blind. Got the only blind cameraman yeah. in Portland. <laughs> <laughs> and you do a great job, um, Steve. Tell me if you could what. What is your job as park host? So the, there's this lovely park there that people can come to. What, what do you do there? Uh, yes, well, I pretty much coordinate uh, groups that come in for rentals, 
Uh, when we have retreats, I make sure things are taken care of in the buildings and on the property and, and help out with that uh, programming as well. Okay, and, and I believe you also created the video that we'll be looking at here in a few minutes, right. which is great. So is it just, so there are other outside groups that are able to use the, the property as well? Correct, from weddings to workshops oh. uh, to retreats as well. Okay. And it help uh, funds uh, the retreats for the low vision and uh, blind as well. Wow, that's great. So he's pretty modest though. He, he, he's at the park and if something goes wrong, they say Steve. <laughs> and so it's very nice to have him there yeah. for us. And yeah. it does help us maintain the park so that we can have that revenue stream to help us continue to maintain our existence. Right. Otherwise, how, do you, how are you funded? Is it through donations? or Strictly donations. So yeah. We ask anybody who's willing to become a member of our organization, annual memberships, $30. But the numbers of our members help us go for grants so that we mm, can then apply right. for grants and say this is what our, our support base already is. So you don't have to be wealthy to help support us. You right. just right. have to have a desire to be, be helpful. Yeah. So, sounds good to me. So there are um, a few events coming up, I believe, um, yeah, and I wanna hear about those. But first, I'd like to take a look at that video that, that Steve created. Um, and, and it kind of gives us a feel for what, what is, what is uh, available at the park and, and what is available to, to people to do that you know, may not realize how many opportunities there are. So let's, let's take a look at that now. This place has changed my life. My oral whole story starts about almost one year ago. I'm Sherry Godoy. I lost my sight on May 22nd of 2015 due to a surgical error that had nothing to do with my eyes and I was blind, completely, completely blind. We met Mary Lee. She changed my life. She told me that there was a place where I can come and I would be able to learn how to begin to function because they were the first people to come and give me help. When I come here, I get to be around other individuals who may be blind or have very low vision and they understand what it's like to go through what I'm trying to learn. I really treasure all of the people that I've met here at Hope Park. I'm even able to help other people who are here new to Oral Hall, help give them the confidence that they need. People say they can't believe how far I've come in one year. I'm learning how to be me again. My first time I ever came to Oral Hall was only four and a half months to the day of losing my sight. I had just been given my cane. I barely knew how to use it. I got more instructions on how to use it. By the time I left, three days later, I was standing up taller. I could use my cane much, much better. And I just had so much more confidence. But more importantly than anything else, I had some hope. Because of Oral Hall, I had my first ride on the Max, down on a bus for the first time. I was taught ways to pour water, go swimming, do things like ride a tandem bike. I was able to meet an instructor. He just really has just opened up my world. So many things that I've done here were the first time I've ever done them. And that's a big deal. I even am able to get onto Facebook now, which is a big deal, because I have a lot of family, and the only way they hear of my progress is through my mother. So it's, they were excited when they got to hear about me from me. Since my first visit, I've been here, this is my seventh time. I do so much more now 
than I did before. Some of the things that I'm able to do now, it's just really exciting. Before I lost my vision, I would never go hiking. I didn't feel confident in my abilities. I was totally amazed when I went down the zigzag trail. It was a trail that I would have never gone down before when I was sighted. But with the confidence and knowing that somebody was just right ahead of me, telling me what to expect, I just went and I was using my cane, you know, using the guide wire that's on my right side when I was going down if needed. I made it all the way down to the trail. I feel a little sorry for my family every time I come back from Oral Hull because I'm kind of pushing them away and saying, no, you just need to take your time, relax, and let me do it my way. <laughs> I get to just be me here, and I, I get to just feel at home being surrounded by people that are like me. Everything's going to work out. That was very powerful, very powerful. Steve, since you... Uh, you told me you didn't have really any association with this organization before right. you you came. What's your impression of, of Oral Health I was Foundation? moved. Um, I'm moved every day by um, their inspiration to move forward, not just be stagnant, and to uh, be inspired to help each other. Yeah, now that, that, that impressed me right there where, you know, she said she was helping other people. I mean, that's, that's a really great thing to be able to overcome your fears of something that's, you know, that's happened to you that could be perceived as a real negative, but to take it and, you know, be helping other people. That's, that's impressive. That's impressive. So uh, they mentioned in there um, tandem bike riding, and you said something about that, too. So tell me about that. There, there is, as a blind person, we like to prefer not to think of it as tandem. We, we don't see who's in front of us, so we're still the only person on the bike. <laughs> okay. But it's great because it gives you that, that independence and that yeah. freedom. You know, there's really nothing we can't do um, except maybe drive a car, and I will even be willing to try that if you're... Pretty soon they're going to have cars that are, you know, I mean, they have cars now that can drive without right. There's drivers. a lot so of us that are very anxious wait, waiting I for that day. I bet you are, yeah. Uh, yeah. But um, the thing that, that I really like is the fact that you can go out there. And you, when you first lose your eyesight, it's very frightening. I, I was there with right where she was at. When I lost my eyesight, it was an instantaneous thing. Really? It, you're very scared. Yeah. You're alone. Uh, you start to get angry. I mean, think about this. You're by yourself, it's pitch black, and somebody knocks on your door at seven at night. You don't know who's on the other side mm -hmm. of it. It's horribly uh, yeah. paralyzing. Yeah. And what we do is we work with individuals and we, and we teach them how to continue to live a normal life, how not to be stuck in their house. Get out and get on the tandem bikes, get out and Go kayaking, um, go hiking, as you saw on the trails. Right, right. Uh, those are the things that give them that independence to feel like themselves again. I like to tell people, any of us, yourselves, Steve, anybody, can lose their eyesight. Yeah. But you have to give up your vision. And mm, interesting. Uh, as long as we yeah. keep our vision and know that we can do what we can do. I do quite a bit. I run. I come in and run the camera. <laughs> no. I'm a judge for this in the state, so you know. You, you keep pretty busy, Steve. Justice is blind. <laughs> well, and I heard <laughs> that you were going to be playing Santa Claus. Well, I heard. Is that, that right? That is that true? I heard that I have a doppelganger out there who's. Mm. Oh, who, oh, who oh, is, that's right. Who is actually the real Santa Claus? Oh, it's as the real Santa Claus. Oral okay. Hull, okay. Oral Hull is working very closely with the community of Gresham, and uh, we were a very active participant in our mm -hmm. Greater Gresham Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. and Visitors Bureau, and so. We've, we've gotten a hold of, of Santa up at the North Pole, and we're hosting him. He's going to stay at the park, but he will be uh, out and about the city of Gresham and, and Sandy all throughout the end of November and all through December, right really? up to Christmas. Wow. Uh, we managed to, uh, to secure him. He, you'll see him in a number of different places, like on the, uh, I think on the 20th of this month, mm -hmm. Santa's going to be at uh, Nancy's Floral. Okay, that's and then, kind of right behind us. And what's really nice is that the Saturday after Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. Santa will be walking around all over downtown Gresham. Santa, Santa and Mrs. Claus. Oh, and, and Mrs. Claus Mrs. too. Mrs. Claus too, and they'll be going from shop to shop. Nice. And uh, in fact, I, I've heard it on, uh, 
on good authority that you can even email Santa. So oh. you'll be able to get a card from him. I heard something. that too, and I think we have that information. We'll put it up on the screen. So if, you know, if uh, kids want to email Santa, that's but, a great way to do it. And, but that's what we're really excited about. That that's visit. great. That's great. Now um, I know that you uh, have fundraisers from time to time, and, and you have a dinner coming up called a Dinner to Die For. Dinner to Die For. Okay. Uh, and if I understand correctly, that's the Sandy Actress Theater. It's a murder mystery dinner. It's a murder mystery yeah. dinner. Have you ever I, been to one of those? I have not. No, I can't I, wait to go yeah, to this one. Yeah, I think one. they sound like fun. They're exciting. Yeah, so that's coming up, um, and that is on... On the 19th, I believe. Okay. 19th. And so we'll have the information on that, too. But that sounds like a really fun event. And that is a fundraiser, is that right? It is a fundraiser. Oh, yeah. we, we're like any other nonprofit. We rely very heavily on, on, the, on the generosity of the community. Yeah, yeah. And so we are always looking at ways to give back to the community and give you something in exchange for your support. And in this particular case, it's one of those great things where you have a lovely, a wonderful dinner. I've already, mm -hmm. I've already eaten some of the food that the caterer uh, is providing. And I loved it, and I'm pretty picky. <laughs> and, uh, I eat, I, and I eat kosher, and right, I, I right. still was able to eat it. But um, I've always wanted to do one of the murder mysteries. I don't think I would be able to solve it. I might, I might be a victim pretty quick. Who knows? <laughs> it sounds like a lot of fun. But though. it is it on does. the 19th, yeah. and I think you had the information on the screen, right. or we're gonna ha we'll have it, as to how to get a hold of us to, uh, to inquire tickets. about tickets. Yeah, that sounds good. And we have tickets available still. They're going quick, but we do have some available okay, still. Okay, great. We're almost out of time. What else do we need to know about the Oral Hole Foundation that, that we don't know? I think that the main thing to remember is that we're here for you. All of us are going to be touched by vision loss, mm -hmm. and when it happens, you are not alone. You can, call, you can call us. It doesn't matter if you can afford us or not. We will make, we'll find a way. We'll find a way to, to be there for you, to show you that you're okay. And you two can go zip lining, and you two can go kayaking, all yeah. the things that Cited, I might not do, but <laughs> but you know, I I think something about being in that situation might give you a little more. We have pianos. More, uh, we know. even have pianos out there, and, and we have a blind piano tuner that comes out and tunes them. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Well, thank you, Steve and Stephen, <laughs> both of you for for being here to share about Oral Hull, um, doing great work, and really um, giving hope to a lot of people who otherwise might you know find themselves isolating and 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 not going out there in the community. So it's a it's a good thing. Monica, thanks, thanks for having us out again. You bet, you bet. And thanks for watching this uh, first segment of Community Hotline. We'll be right back in just a few minutes, so please don't go away. documentary was more than I ever would have dreamed of doing. This is a community media station. It was phenomenal. Ready camera one. What is it about this place that makes so many different people come together? Ready camera two. Very professional, experienced people. You can use these industry standard pieces of equipment. Ready camera three. Take three. eyes to something they've never even thought of before. Cool stuff happens. It becomes this community. That's going to really change who's telling the stories and who's, who's controlling the messaging.